referred to passion and ignorance. So the potential of passion and ignorance is there in the material mode of goodness. And that what? Yes. Yes. So, so uh, for a time, one is in sattva guna, very peaceful. But then those lower modes grow up. And then the uh, raju gun becomes prominent and tamu gun becomes prominent. This is actually, as you could say, a cycle of, cycle of frustration, more or less. Uh, one starts off in the mode of goodness. Uh, everything's peaceful, nice, but what happens? We get bored because mode of goodness is still material. So <coughs> there, there's a ceiling on everything. You see, Maya means limitation. Maya means measure, and measure means limit. Maya liter literally, that's one translation of Maya as measure, and measure means limitation. You see, you say one foot. That's not two feet. That's one foot. You say two feet. That's not three feet. That's you know, limitation. So material mode of goodness is a limitation of consciousness. It is, uh, of the three types of material limitations, it's the best, it's recommended, but it's still a limitation. So therefore, there will be frustration. Because consciousness, the energy of the soul, wants to expand unlimitedly because we are supposed to be Krishna conscious and Krishna is unlimited. You see? So in the mode of goodness, there's a limit. And so we get bored just being in the mode of goodness. And when we get bored, what happens? We're agitated. And we start to look around, what else is there? Well, this is already the mode of passion coming up. And then we start, you know, new ideas, new ideas, mode of passion, new, different, go for it. <laughs> One gets all excited, wow, something new, around the corner, over the bend, let's get it, over the hill. You see, all excited. You know, running, rushing out, and then working very hard to acquire this thing, and gradually working oneself into frustration. Either one can't acquire it, sour grapes, you see, or one does acquire it and finds that it, after so much work it doesn't make me happy anyway. And then, so then one becomes more frustrated, discouraged. This is the beginning of the mode of ignorance. Oh, to hell with it. What, what is all this for? I'm tired of it. And you just want to sleep and you know, drink and, and uh, just become mad. And then <coughs> after that, after totally giving in, this is the mode of ignorance, just totally giving in to anything and everything, no resistance anymore, just oh, because it doesn't matter. And one becomes so low down, disgusted, uh, that something wakens, that wakes up, that I can't go on like this. I can't, you know, just float like a stool in the toilet water. I have to get up and get myself together. Mode of goodness again, you see. I'll get myself together now. I'll, I'll control my senses. I'll control my mind. I'll, you know. So, mode of goodness again. Everything peaceful, nice, I'm pure. And then, hmm. What else is there? <laughs> 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 so these are the three modes. You see? So one leads to the other. Because the root, the root is one. These are three gunas, three qualities of one mula prakriti. You see? And so they're, they're turning. Uh, the force that turns them is time itself. Material time. So, mode of goodness, this is an interesting point. Mode of goodness, which is the, the, the basic quality of the mind, you see, that, that's the uh, starting point of the mind. Hmm? The mind can become corrupted, yes, certainly. Because, uh, because, as I said, the intelligence, which is very close to the mind, is of the quality of passion. The senses are also of the quality of passion. Huh? And then there's the sense objects which are the quality of tamoguna, ignorance. So even, even one's in the mode of goodness, one is in touch with the other modes, just in working with this world, you know, just working with this body. We're already in touch with the other modes. So, uh, therefore, we have, what we have to do is cultivate our, our spiritual consciousness. That's the only way out of this. Anything else? 
Yes? Yes? Alright. The spirit soul has a has a mind too, doesn't he? The spirit soul, a real soul, has mind. And then there's this other mind which is in the subtle body. That's another one. The spirit soul, uh, at present, situated in the heart, is a spark or a seed. So from a spark, you get a fire. From a seed, you get a tree. The potential is there. So the potential for spiritual mind, spiritual intelligence, spiritual senses, spiritual body, spiritual identity are all there in the Jiva Atma. But Jiva Atma refers to the soul, this term Jiva Atma refers to the soul in conditioned state. It is called Jiva Atma uh, or Jiva Bhuta. Jiva Bhuta. So it is like a spark. The potential is there. Uh, the Brahma Bhuta means the soul in the liberated position. So in Brahma Bhuta, <coughs> then the spiritual mind, spiritual senses, spiritual intelligence, spiritual form, spiritual activities, uh, they are manifested. Uh, this is called the Swarup of the soul. But for that Swarup to be manifest, we have to be in the transcendental situation. We cannot be uh, speculating about our spiritual mind as long as we are under the modes of nature. Then what we should do is work on purifying our consciousness. So the material mind, this is the condition, as I said, of material attraction. It means our consciousness is polluted. So this is, you know, the sahajas, the prakriti sahajas, the cheap pseudo Vaishnavas. They're the ones who do like this. They contemplate simultaneously. And here I have a material mind, material senses engage in material sen sense gratification. You see, because they don't, they don't take effort to control their senses. And at the same time, they're thinking, I'm a gopi, I'm a this, I'm a that in the spiritual world. And simultaneously, here I am. <coughs> You know, smoking a cigarette and eating fish, smoking beedi and eating some fish. They put tulsi leaves on their fish. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and at the same time, I'm imagining I'm dancing with Krishna and Rasalila. Now, this is absurd. This is nonsensical. It's, uh, the spiritual identity manifests when the soul is from out of the shadow of the three modes of material nature. So as long as there's material mind, uh, uh, as long as we're conditioned by the material mind, then we can only say that there is a potential for a spiritual mind. Potential is there. Uh, just like the potential of an entire oak tree or banyan tree is within one seed. Yes, you had a question. This gentleman and then in the back. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, the, uh, Speed soul in spiritual form is all cognizant. Oh, oh yeah, you're asking. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking at him. And <laughs> <laughs> there was this young, okay, you, all right. All right, let me point this out. You're first, you're second with the glasses, yes, sir. and you're third against the wall. Okay? <laughs> yes. Right. Originally, the uh, spirit soul is supposed to be pure, all cognizant. Mm -hmm. um, how is that that it has is the material desire to run it over? If it's all knowing, it should know what is discriminate, what is not good, what is not, not what is good for it. But how is that once you hold it over the desire manifest and has become to the world? Well what you have to understand is that spirit soul is not Krishna. Spirit soul is not God. Spirit soul may be spiritual, but the Vedas say Balagrashata Bhagasha Bhagasha Shatata this verse in Upanishads that it is very, very small, one ten thousandth of the tip of a hair in size. So because it is very, very small, therefore the spirit soul is dependent. Position is a dependence. Uh, must depend on Krishna. Mm -hmm. So now the spirit soul, as such, being very tiny, has one potency, tatasta shakti, potency of choice. So we can choose, we're always dependent on Krishna, but we can choose to be dependent on Krishna directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. So directly means uh, directly taking shelter of his lotus feet. Indirectly means taking shelter of his material energy. In either case, we're dependent. But 
In the former case, uh, we are admitting, I am your eternal servant, my dear Lord. I am, uh, like Lord Chaitanya is pray, praying and Shikshastakam, Stiti Dudhi Sajasham Vachintaya, please fix me as a tiny atom of dust at your lotus feet. This is the prayer of the jiva who is taking direct shelter of Krishna. And indirectly we're thinking, uh, I want to be Krishna. I want to uh, enjoy. I want to be independent. So, you see, these qualities to be the enjoyer, to be independent, they're also there because we are part and parcel of Krishna, who is the supreme enjoyer and supreme independent. So we have those qualities too. But we must engage them in Krishna's service in order not to uh, fall down as a result of these qualities. And when we take the wrong choice, uh, then, yes, we fall down, come under the control of the material nature. And so, if the question is, why is it like that? It's like that because uh, the, in love, there must be free will. We, we, are, we exist to love Krishna. But there's no question of love if you have a gun to your head <laughs> that says, love me or I'll pull the trigger. Love is ne cannot be autocratic. It cannot be force, you see. It must be free. And so therefore there's a choice. Now, that we have to, we have to take to Krishna's plan. Krishna's reason for creating, for not creating, but this is just the way things are eternally, but this is His will. Krishna's will that there is free will for all of us is so that we can love Him. This is His design. And uh, just because we find a way to deviate from that, it's not Krishna's fault, you see. Just like a parent, a kind parent, gives all facility to the child to live a nice life, to grow up healthy, strong, uh, uh, give them good education. The father and mother uh, provide all of that. Uh, but if the child finds a way, you know, to do mischief, uh, to misuse these uh, good gifts of the parents, which are given with all good intentions, to misuse them for some uh, nefarious motive, then that's the child's fault. That's the fault of the son or daughter. So we have deviated. And in order to get out of this situation, we have to admit that. We have to face that fact that it is due to our misuse of free will. If we go on speculating, no, no, but Krishna shouldn't have created this free will in the first place. <laughs> it's his fault. You know, the devil made me, like they say, the devil made me do it, or God made me do it, always trying to thrust the blame on, s on some higher power. Then we will never come to grips with our own problem. You see, it's our own problem that we, that we have to solve. So free will is there for us uh, to engage lovingly in Krishna's service. And then we will have this uh, uh, rasa, this transcendentally satisfying relationship with the Lord in which all desires are completely uh, engaged in Krishna's service. Okay, so next question. Yeah. I hope I can frame it right. Um, but Mahal said the uh, mind wants to live in this material world mm. and uh, it's made up of uh, uh, the desires are the main ingredients of, of mind. Desires that want to. Mind is a storehouse. Of storehouse. Desires. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so desires are. Uh, uh, they want to make us stay, make the mind stay in the material world. Now, is it that these desires are manipulated, uh, whereby it creates its own. Way where it interacts with us, the spirit soul, in various ways. Is it that Maya interacts with the desires? Mm. Well, actually, now you're, you see, now you're bringing us into uh, tomorrow's seminar subject, which is of relationships. You're talking right there about a fundamental relationship, and this is a. I will expound upon that uh, at length tomorrow, but uh, uh, just briefly now. Uh, I think what you're touching on 
is the relationship of the soul as a pure entity, non-material entity, with mind and with desires which are material things. And uh, uh, I suppose you, you're, you're wondering about how these material things, how they overcome the mind which is spiritual. So uh, it is by identification. And I'll give you a very um, apt analogy. Um, uh, when a person goes into a cinema house to watch the latest uh, Amitabh Bachchan movie, so uh, he's very excited and he goes in this big hall and there are many seats there so he picks a nice seat to get a, a very good view of the screen. And so what happens? He sits there comfortably. He's anticipating. He wants his... He has, he's identifying very much with this movie that's going to come. He really, you know, wants that to happen. He's open, accepting to this experience. So everything that follows, he's eager for it to happen, you see. So the lights go down. Now when I explain about the conditioning of the soul, this is literally what happens first of all. The soul enters into the, the first stage of conditioning of the soul when it comes out of uh, this Turiya state into the modes of nature is first it goes into the mode of ignorance, which is a total shutdown of all awareness, just like in the cinema house. The lights go down completely. And then, the mode of passion. You hear the projectors start whirring and the lights starts <laughs> flickering. Mode of passion, something's happening. Wow, great. <laughs> and then there's Amitabh, <laughs> my hero. <laughs> And full identification, you see, fully identifying with him. So when he's uh, uh, dancing with Aishwarya Rai, you're so happy. <laughs> Great. And uh, then when he's fighting with some bad guy, Salman Khan or something, they're fighting. And then you're, you're on the edge of your seat. And Amitabh gets hit. Oh! You see. So uh, the the English word for this is vicarious. It's by identification we accept the suk and the duk, which actually has nothing to do with us. <laughs> it's up there on the screen. <laughs> it's up there on the screen. It has nothing to do with us. But, but by identification, we're accepting it. We're, we're, we're welcoming it into our field of consciousness. And the reality is, we're just sitting in a seat in, in a dark room, <laughs> doing nothing. You know, that's why in Gita, Krishna says the soul is the non-doer. It's a literal fact. The soul is just sitting in the seat of the heart. And the material nature is showing this big Bollywood production you know, all around us in 3D. <laughs> Cinemascope and Dolby sound. <laughs> and by identification, we're welcoming it. And we want it to go on and on and on. And we're experiencing happiness and experiencing distress by identification, not by, not by direct, being directly involved, you see, like this Amitabh. So it's very interesting. Uh, Amitabh Bachchan, he's a star, you know, <laughs> call him stars. So in uh, the Vedic presentation of this universe, the demigods are the stars. They're actually the stars in the heaven, <laughs> actually the lokas of the demigods. They are the stars and they manipulate the material energy uh, to, uh, to manifest this body that we have. The demigods actually reside in our bodies as well as up there. And they make the activities of this body possible. They're managing the, the different movements of this body. So just like Amitabh, he's a star. And, but uh, he, he's actually somewhere else. He's in <laughs> Mumbai somewhere. But now his, uh, his representation, which we can take to be this body, is on the cinema screen. And we're completely enthralled and identifying it. So this, this body is a kind of reproduction of... Uh, actually, it's a reproduction originally of the Visvarupa of the Lord Himself, the universal form. I'm all going to be getting into this later. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead now into this uh, wonderful philosophy um, uh, of macrocosm, microcosm. So anyway, this, this material body we have, it's a, it's, a, it's a tiny reproduction of the Vishwarup, the universal form of the Lord, which is, the, the, uh, as Ramanujacharya says, the universal form, this whole universe is the material body of Vishnu. And so it's microcosm, that's the macrocosm, and this is microcosmic 
microcosmically reproduced as this body, and the strings are being pulled by the devatas, you see, who are the stars, you see, and, and uh, there's a script writer, it's all according to our karma, a script is written, <laughs> and the location <laughs> and cameras are set up and makeup is there and costuming <laughs> all of that is provided by the demigods and uh, and then we just do the dance the song and dance and acting and dancing around the tree and all that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually we're not doing that's all projected on the screen of, of Maya the screen of the material energy. And the soul is just sitting and watching in darkness, <laughs> in primeval <laughs> fundamental ignorance. And that ignorance is necessary to enjoy this show. And that's why, if, you know, for some reason, in the middle of the movie, the lights come on, for some reason, everyone complains. <laughs> Turn off the lights! They want, they want this ignorance. They want it. They want to be in darkness. Otherwise, you can't enjoy it. <laughs> You can't enjoy it. <laughs> so you see, the soul is willingly giving himself over. And that's how we become overwhelmed by happiness and distress and all these things. Because we, we open our, you know, the gates. Yes, this is what I want. So this is why I say, rather than picking through all the many, many specific desires, we should go back to this fundamental, this is the fundamental desire. I want to be in Maya. <laughs> I want to be in ignorance. And that's, that's where Krishna consciousness, that's where we start to work on that fundamental desire. And if we can rectify that, then all these other you know, specific so many desires that bring us through 8,400,000 species, they will also be rectified. So um, first, this gentleman, then Madhiji. Okay? No the question. objective the remedy that's been advised is liberation from Sukha, from Luka and distress and happiness. So it would be like sitting in that theater and watching this movie without sort of attaching yourself to anything that happened on the screen. Wouldn't that be sort of completely boring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well that stage, of that, that, that type of liberation is called in Srimad Bhagavatam Vimukta Manina. That one is thinking one is liberated. <laughs> one is actually in the conditioned situation. Uh, it, this, this is like the jnanis, you know. Uh, by, by thought alone, they think that they're liberated. They, they, everything is still going on, still the karmic affairs, but they think, oh, this is all maya, this is, you know, this is just a show. And you're right, it's boring after a while. Because the show is going on, there's nothing else to do except <laughs> think this is maya. And so after a while, one starts... It's Maya, but it's kind of interesting, Maya. <laughs> like, and so like Prabhupada says, the impersonalists, they say everything is illusion, but at the same time they're very expert in enjoying the illusion. <laughs> so this is not Krishna. In Krishna consciousness, we don't want to stay in that Bollywood cinema house. We want to go to the real Leela. This, that, that is karma, that's not Leela. That's karma disguised as Leela. We want to go to Krishna Leela. And for this, uh, like the Srimad, uh, the, the Brahma Sangita, very nice verse, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, Matayamana to enter into this Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, this transcendental Rasa of Krishna, Manaksu, the mind must be pure. Su, you know, means very good. Manak means mind. So, Manaksu, the mind must be completely purified, completely spiritualized. Then we can enter into the Rasa of Krishna. And in, th in that situation, then the soul is active. The soul is directly empowered, uh, given a siddha deha, spiritual body, spiritual mind, spiritual senses. Then the soul is not, not just sitting and watching, but the soul is directly engaged in the lila. In, uh, as Srila Prabhupada says, uh, the goal <coughs> is to contribute to the Lord's enjoyment. This is the whole purpose of devotional service. So the, uh, the perfection of that cultivation of we're trying to contribute to the Lord's enjoyment is, is realized in the spiritual world when one has one's siddha deha, spiritual form, and is directly engaged in Krishna's pastimes, rendering loving service. So this is the real lila, and this, this is the real kata, this is the real discussion, the real thing to talk about. This is the real meditation. Krishna is the real star. <laughs> 
you see. Actually, it's wonderful also in Bhagavatam we find Krishna has one of his names is Natyadhar, which means the great actor. He's, he's the original actor. You know, Amitabh Bhajan is, is millions and millions of times removed from Krishna. <laughs> Just a tiny, 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 tiny you know, material reflection of, of Krishna's original acting prowess. So Krishna's activities, his leelas, these are, this is actually the, the play which we are meant to absorb ourselves into and participate in directly. Uh, how, do we kn- how can we know that we have had a taste of controlling the mind? How can we know that we... How can we know that we have had a taste of controlling the mind? I had a taste? Well, I mean, it's, uh, one has to, it's not very easy to control the mind. But if, if one is trying to control the mind, how does one know that one has controlled it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the danger. <laughs> we, to control the mind, we have to get off the mental platform. And if we're asking questions like this, how do I know <laughs> that I know that I know that I know that it goes? This is the mental platform. You know, it's like this is called uh, regressum ad infinitum in philosophy. It's, uh, you know, you keep backing up. How do I know? How do I know that? 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 This is, the, this is the mental plane. This is a very nice uh, uh, way of understanding if you're on the mental plane. So, real control, actually to control the mind. Actually, we can't control the mind. Uh, only in Rishi case, Lord Krishna controls the mind. But we have to, I mentioned already, viveka, we have to come to the, the position of discrimination. That means being in our spiritual situation uh, uh, and in this way, being not moved, uh, being detached from this swirling material energy, and looking upon it with detachment, and uh, uh, but not as the jnanis are, do, as we just described, but as devotees. That means, uh, in devotional service, we are detached from this energy, not trying to control and enjoy it, but trying to utilize it for Krishna service, and depending on Krishna as the supreme enjoyer to to facilitate our devotional service you see here we are we're here in this uh, Kali Yuga very dark uh, materialistic time trying to serve Krishna so whatever opportunity we have to serve the Lord whatever nice facility there is to serve the Lord that is given by Krishna that is his mercy and similarly the mind itself to bring the mind under control, to make it peaceful, to make it uh, uh, agreeable <coughs> to devotional service. That is, that is Krishna, Krishna's mercy. So we have to be in our spiritual position, uh, praying to Krishna. I am, my dear Lord, I am, just like we heard Srila Prabhupada say, Gopi Bharta Parakamal Yor Dasa Dasa Anadasa. We should be in this position of eternal servant of Krishna and that we achieve by chanting Hare Krishna. So we chant Hare Krishna nicely, uh, following the regulative principles. Uh, in this way we can uh, establish ourselves in our spiritual identity more strongly. And in that identity we pray to Krishna, Please, my dear Lord, all I want to do is serve you. So I have this mind, I have these senses, this is material energy, this is all, you know, I tried to control it before, it just overwhelmed me. So please, my dear Lord, please help me to serve you by taking command of my mind and senses. And so the actual control will be done by Krishna. But we must have the desire. And yes, and we must be, uh, as I told you, plugging our soul into the spiritual potency by the chanting. And this gives our, our spiritual identity more and more strength. See, we have to become spiritually strong. The reason that the mind is such a problem for us is that we're so spiritually weak. It's like a candle, a little candle flame, and the, the window is open, and the wind is blowing in. And so the candle flame is flickering, threatening to be blown right out. So we have to make this, these arrangements, you know, to, to close the window and, and uh, make the flame very strong and steady. Would you say that um, controlling 
controlling the senses, you can control the senses with the mental intellect. But what, if you're controlling the mind, not, not the senses, I mean the mind, um, would you be using your intellect more? And of course you'd have to use your memory, you'd have to use your memory a lot to control the mind, wouldn't you? You'd have to re remember what you read in the scriptures, which is so difficult. Mm -hmm. It's terribly difficult, I find, to remember uh, what I've read in the scriptures and apply it to controlling my mind with my intellect. Yeah, that uh, that that is there. It's very difficult. But uh, all of this, we have to draw strength from the spiritual nature itself, and therefore, the uh, basic thing is to be chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, because if you chant, then you will remember. You see, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam, hearing, chanting, remembering. You may not be able to remember seven hundred shlokas of Gita, see, all the time. But you can remember Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, 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 Hare. And we have to cultivate that remembrance by always chanting. That's what we really have to work on. And then if we can keep this vibration always turning in our consciousness, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then yes, the, the, uh, the memory will be naturally be strengthened and uh, uh, the intelligence will naturally uh, take charge of the mind and the mind will naturally take charge of the senses but all of this has to the, the beginning strength has to come from the spiritual platform if we're spiritually weak and trying to struggle with our intelligence and mind it, it will be very very difficult so therefore there is this basic process of chanting and that's really what we have to focus on all right then um, I'm going to stop here. <coughs> so I thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, I invite you all to be here tomorrow, same time, same place. We will continue uh, entering into the subject of relationships, the psychology and philosophy of relationships.